Hi everyone! Today we'll be looking at how new progress is the biggest challenge with 3D printed organs. If you're new to this channel, welcome! This is Mr. Singularity, where we explore the scientific and technological breakthroughs shaping the future as we know it. Be sure to stick to the end of the video and like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification button so you don't miss any of our videos. As once a month we share a community post that's exclusive to our subscribers, giving away some interesting prizes. It's only up for a few hours though, so keep a lookout. And without further ado, let's get into it. We're very close to developing organs in the laboratory, but the greatest remaining obstacle was to build the fine networks of blood vessels needed to keep them alive. Researchers have now shown that growing dietary dye will solve the problem. More than 100,000 people are reportedly on waiting lists for organ transplants in the US. And if you are lucky enough to have a replacement, you are facing immunosuppressive medications for a lifetime. That's why scientists have long thought of developing new organs from patients' own cells that could counter both the scarcity and the possibility of organ rejection at the same time. The tissue engineering industry has made a lot of growth. Lab-grown skin has been available for medical use for decades, and more recently stem cells have been used to seed scaffolds to replicate more complex biological tissue, either set up in synthetic materials or rendered by removing cells from natural support structures. Perhaps the most promising advancement, though, has been the incorporation of 3D printing technologies into the market, which aims to offer biomedicine the same speed, versatility, and innovation that engineers enjoy. So-called bioprinters are now being used to build organs for medical study, and some exciting proof of concept for full organs have been published. Yet what is known as vascularization is a growing problem faced by all issue engineers. It's not too difficult to develop bulk tissue, but scientists have failed to construct the complex networks of tiny blood vessels that take nutrients and oxygen deep into organs and bring waste products out. That's why so far, most examples have been of organelles only one or two inches wide or hollow components such as throats or bladders. Today, however, a team of American researchers led by scientists at Rice University in Texas have developed a 3D bioprinter that can print vessels in biocompatible hydros of less than a third of a millimeter long. We explain in a paper in Science how they use the bioprinter to construct a model of the human lung, which can efficiently oxygenate human blood. The group used a popular 3D printing method called stereolithography projection, which uses light to solidify layer by layer of light sensitive resins. In this case, they used a solvent that, when subject to blue light, transforms into a liquid hydrogel. A special projector beams out from below high resolution light patterns to define each 2D slice's shape. Instead, an overhead arm raises the rising platform in order to create the next sheet. It is relatively easy to produce high resolution light patterns, but the difficulty is to make the resin reactive enough to reproduce certain minute measurements. The main finding was that when confining the solidification to a very fine base, a common food dye called yellow number no. five could easily absorb blue light. The additives also come from the food and beverage industries and are absolutely non-toxic. They use the technique to create a complex lung layout of tiny air sacs surrounded by delicate vessels of blood. We proved the artificial organ would oxygenate human blood in experiments just to demonstrate that the technique could one day be used in humans. They have used carriers of print tissue, just filled them with liver cells before they injected them into mice. The team led by Rice University aren't the only ones working on this issue. Startup Prelis Biologics is already focusing on the bioprinting of minute capillary blood vessels and they introduced a series of tissue scaffolds with capillaries built in last December. Yet though addressing the question of blood flow has been top of the tissue engineering wish list, the authors of the new study point out that the circulatory system is not the only location where such fine structures occur. Our organs also have separate vascular networks, like lung airways and blood vessels, or bile ducts and blood vessels in the liver, says Jordan Miller, assistant professor of bioengineering at Rice University and senior author of the research article. These interpenetrating networks are intertwined physically and biochemically, and the architecture itself is closely linked to tissue structure. Ours is the first bioprinting technique that explicitly and comprehensively addresses the problem of multivascularization. He added, until this method will be used to print entire bodies, there is already a long way to go, but the approach overcomes one of the big hurdles remaining in the way. And importantly, the developers have opted to open source the project so that others can expand on their ideas and drive advancement in the area. The findings are very positive, according to Nunez, but she refused to say any more until the research found a home in a prestigious academic journal. 
The team crossed the line at 14 days of conception to avoid rapid resistance, which is before human embryos can develop a central nervous system. The embryos of Chimera are essentially cell heads, and Nunez does not intend to put such hybrids to full length. The issue? It begs the issue of how the idea has succeeded. So even if it did, Ross concluded, it doesn't make sense to cultivate human organs on primates, since they take too long to mature. Monkeys also have far fewer organs and are inconsistent with adult humans. Many scientists have another view. The findings had significance for Dr. Aliando de los Angeles at Yale University, but without the generation of full-grown human organs, it might tell us what kind of stem cells we can use, or certain ways to improve what is considered human forms of chimerism within pigs, he explained. Nunez had adopted a similar approach. The end aim will be to build human organs that can be transplanted, but for today's scientists, that direction itself is much more important, she said, adding that the team is developing destruct switches in case human cells form in the monkey's brain. Uber said Sung? They're also likely to investigate the ability to further grow these human monkey embryos into maturity. Ispuzo Beaumont is not the only one who crosses the red line this month. Japan becomes the first government to accept cessation of human-animal hybrids. Dr. Hiromitsu Nakauchi, a researcher of rodent chimeras at Tokyo University, is one of many willing to cultivate human stem cells inside rodent embryos and put them to an end, even though he assured nature that he was intending to proceed gradually to ease public concerns. Brains Composite Maybe even more frightening are experiments of chimera, which inject the brain of an animal with a dose of human physiology. Researchers developed mice with human astreocyte cells in 2014, non-neuronal brain cells that make up more than half of the brain, which sustain neural signals. Human beings are up to 20 times bigger than mouse astrocytes and bear 100 times more connections, so they can help organize the brain impulses for information gathering. The hybrids were smarter. They did at least four times more than the usual mice when tested with a regular check a whopping effect. Next, there's the latest effort by China to inject human DNA into monkeys. The goal was to unravel the biological origins of intelligence. The genes could be why we're smarter than our primate ancestors, so the team decided to see whether monkey brains might be more like ours genetically converted with a sprinkling of genetic magic dust. Far from being transparent on the results, compared to human babies, the hybrids took their brains longer to mature, but their final size was nearly equal to regular monkey brains. On a short-term memory check, the models did do well, but with just five modified monkeys in the pool, results are far from being resolved. The squad have attracted strong scrutiny for jumping the path of Chimera. On the evolutionary ladder, monkeys are much closer to human beings than mice, and many worried that endowing them with human genes correlated with brain development would unintentionally grant them a greater sense of self-awareness. This is a disturbing thought. In fact, laboratory monkeys are prisoners locked in cages. How are the implications of their reasoning being theoretically humanized? To be honest, there were some limitations set by the Chinese team. On what's appropriate, humans have long tiptoed across the red line. Primates on instance are physically much closer to us than pigs, making their humanization potentially more possible. The team said, when it comes to primates and other great apes who are an evolutionary skip apart from us, well, nobody is insane enough to want and render such combinations. And the Chinese trial certainly wouldn't be the last. Human-monkey hybrid brains are theoretically highly useful in studying complicated brain disorders. The Los Angeles concluded in a paper on science, bringing the Alzheimer's. Notwithstanding best intentions, we also don't have an animal model that recuperates the disorder's intricacies, creating a huge obstacle to science as millions struggle. In principle, creating human-monkey chimeras may offer a better model of brain disorders for disorders where primate models aren't good enough, De Los Angeles said. Will you be convinced? I don't feel I am. There is clearly no straightforward moral solution to that. It is obvious, though, that lines are being drawn, pulled, crossed, and crossed over again as it comes to human-animal chimeras. Right now, we are nowhere near scientifically close to destroying synthetic embryos. Let's just hope we don't have another CRISPR baby fiasco in the near future. Only this time, the children aren't actually real. If you made it this far in the video, thank you, and welcome to the end of the video club. What's your take on this? Let me know down in the comments below and check out one of these other videos. This has been Mr. Singularity, and I'll see you on the next one.